Hello dear students. Welcome to another edition of Learning Chemistry is Fun videos. We are continuing with uh, some basic concepts in organic chemistry which are very very essential to understand why is and how of chemical reactions. We have earlier dealt with inductive effect, electromagnetic effect, resonance. Today we are going to talk about hyperconjugation or no bond resonance. Now, if you take the word itself, no bond resonance. In other words, this concept is nothing but an extension of the concept of resonance, which we have dealt with in the earlier video. Resonance is simply like a ball being tossed around from one person to the other so that it remains within the group. Here we are talking about electron shifting which will result in no bond between two atoms. So it's no bond resonance. What I mean over here is, let's take a very very simple example. We've got the example, we've taken the example of the ethyl cation over here. Ethyl is CH3, CH2. We are talking about the behavior of CH3, CH2 positive ion. Written, I've written the structural form of this, CH3, CH and positive over here. So there are two hydrogen and there's a positive sign. Positive sign means its octet is not complete, it is short of electrons. Single bond means there are sigma bond at all these places. So this is a sigma, sigma, sigma bond. This carbon carries a positive charge. So the carbon next to it will be the alpha carbon atom. The hydrogen atoms attached to it are known as the alpha hydrogen atoms. A very, very essential condition for hyperconjugation to take place is the presence of hydrogen on the alpha carbon atom. In other words, there should be alpha hydrogen atoms present in the group. How does that make a difference? Here, it is nothing but a ping pong of the bonds happening over here. In other words, the, sig the single bond, that is the sigma bond between carbon and hydrogen, any of the carbon hydrogen, it tends to the electrons which are involved in this, they tend to shift between the two carbon atoms because this carbon is positively charged. It's short of electrons. So what it does is it wants electrons. It tries to pull the electrons from the carbon-hydrogen bond of the adjacent carbon of, from the alpha carbon atom. With the result, this CC bond turns into a double bond. So what will happen to the hydrogen over here? The hydrogen over here gets a positive charge. The possibility of carbon turning into a double bond, that is CC turning into a double bond is, it can withdraw sigma electrons from CH bond here. CH bond, the second one. CH bond, the third one. In other words, if you see over here, there are three possible structures wherein the three hydrogens are acquiring a positive charge turn by turn. So this is somewhat like resonance, but since there is no bond left between the carbon and the hydrogen, it is called as no bond resonance. There is alternation between single and double bond. How conjugation is conjugated compounds are like having alternate single and double bonds. If you notice over here in this structure, the bond between carbon and carbon is turning to a single and a double, single and a double. None of these forms is the only form existing in the solution. The electron is shuttling between the carbon hydrogen and the carbon carbon. So we have represented it by a double headed arrow indicating that the structures are continuously interchanging between one to the other. This is what we call as hyperconjugation. So all these three are hyperconjugative structures. 
Now you would be able to relate to the three alpha hydrogen atoms over here. So three alpha hydrogen atoms means there are three possibilities of hydrogen getting a positive charge. Hence, there are three hyperconjugated structures over here. Supposing the alpha carbon atom does not have hydrogen. Do you think this type of uh, resonance would be possible? This type of hyperconjugation would be possible? No. Now, what happens to the H positive? Does it go away? No. It stays in the vicinity of this. It stays around this carbon-carbon. Why does it stay around this? If you notice, first there was a sig sigma bond between the carbon and the carbon positive. After this no bond resonance, the two carbon atoms have acquired a double bond. Going back to what we have already learned about uh, pi bonding, we, we notice that the pi bonds are like this. That means perpendicular to the bond length, perpendicular to the bond, the single bond between the two carbon atoms. In other words, there is high electron density above and below the plane of the two carbon atoms. It is this high electron density which keeps the H positive ions in the vicinity of this double bonded carbon atom. So, we, we can't say that the first structure gets converted to these because there is always shuffling going on. The hydrogen positive does not leave. It stays in the vicinity of. So the structure still remains as CH3, CH2 positive. What's the benefit of this? It is very, very useful again. Coming from the concept of resonance, it is again very useful and handy for the molecule or the ion to undergo no bond resonance because in that case the ball remains in this the electron remains within this structure without getting taken away by some other atom or group which is having extra electrons so the stability of the molecule will increase or the ion will increase due to hyperconjugation we have taken the example of a positive charge over here. As you read, you will come across cases, we will talk about free radicals, where what happens is instead of this positive charge over here, there is an unpaired electron which we will denote by a single dot. In other words, we will be talking about free radical. So in the case of free radical also a similar situation will happen. Only thing is the hydrogen instead of getting a positive charge will have a single dot over here indicating the unpaired single electron which is there. In order to explain the hyperconjugation in terms of the orbital effect, carbon 6, atomic number 6, the ground state electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, excited state. 1s2, 2s1, 2p3. Written it in the orbital structures 2s2, 2p2 because we know Hohn's rule that electrons will first occupy the orbital singly and then pairing will happen. Again 2p3, 2s, 2p3. When we are talking about CH3, CH2 positive CH3, carbon has to form four single bonds. In other words, it will be sp3 hybridized. CH2 positive, there is a vacant p orbital and there are one, two and three bonds. In other words, it has to form three bonds. Henceforth, the carbon is sp2 hybridized. Here, I've tried to depict these configurations by splitting this into two. When you have an sp3 hybridized carbon, the black marks here denote the electrons which are already there on the carbon atom. The purple electrons which are popping out of the boxes simply indicate the electrons which it is sharing with either hydrogen or carbon. Just for the sake of clarity, I have written C, H, H, H. That doesn't mean that uh, the 2s electrons will overlap with carbon. No, because after hybridization, 
all of them are at par all of the orbitals are at the same level they are called sp3 hybrid orbitals and not just 2s and 2p so this is sp3 hybrid orbitals it is just to explain that i have written it in a split manner so that you are able to understand come to sp2 hybridized carbon we know that there is a carbon positive charge on it positive means it is short of an electron in other words what happens is in the formation of the sp2 hybridized carbon this electron disappears so it goes away that is how carbon acquires a positive charge now we are left with one electron in 2s and two electrons in 2p which undergo sigma bond formation with hydrogen hydrogen and there will be a carbon overlap so we have single 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 there's a vacant 2p orbital let us represent this diagrammatically carbon sigma bond with hydrogen there is the pair of electrons the shared pair of electrons hydrogen getting into the plane of the paper hydrogen coming out of the plane of the paper what do we mean by into the plane of the paper and out of the plane of the paper it's nothing but to show the three dimensional structure so you have carbon 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 so this is how they are spread out and this is your overlap with the hydrogen atom so if you notice they are in three directions you have the this one going into the plane of the paper whereas the blue one coming out of the plane of the paper since we cannot represent three dimensional structures on a board that is why in order to represent it we have a dotted line and a solid line a dotted line indicating that hydrogen goes into the plane of the paper solid line hydrogen popping out of the plane of the paper so this takes care of the sp3 hybridized carbon 1 2 3 and 4 it has formed four sigma bonds come to ch2 one hydrogen sigma bond hydrogen sigma bond and what happens over here now this is a planar structure actually so they are actually in the same plane so we'll have hydrogen and we'll have the hydrogen sigma sig sigma bond over here this orbital of ours is vacant this is the 2p orbital which doesn't have electrons this is vacant the last square we are talking about there's no electron in this what does it do it needs electron okay let me share it with this right so it pulls the electrons the shared pair of electrons from here towards itself with the result our hydrogen will now remain here without overlapping with the positive charge this is what is hyperconjugation that means the sharing of electrons from a carbon hydrogen bond with a vacant p orbital on the adjacent carbon atoms is what we call as hyperconjugation there are other points in this and that more of applications which will we shall be talking about and which we shall be using in our other concepts where we talk about the stability of free radicals the stability of carbocations and that those are in the videos that follow you will find a write up on this hyperconjugation on the google site learning chemistry is fun everything is free no charges nothing this is just to help the students so in order to get more material on this or in order to get a write up on this so you can refer to it at the last minute please go to the website learning chemistry is fun and you can download the material from there do let us know your feedback thank you for watching